The Bible prophesies, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And Jesus warned that a sign of his coming would be widespread deception. The New Age is a counterfeit spiritual system that Satan has invented to lead many astray, a modern form of Babylon. The quest for occult wisdom and knowledge has perverted those who seek it and is condemned by the Bible because the secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Join us as we count down the top 10 lies of the New Age, where Marla Alona uses scripture to set the record straight and unmask the devil's ingenious deceptions. This special edition of Setting the Record Straight, God's Truth for This Generation, is brought to you by City Bible Group. God bless you. Thank you for joining us today as we continue our top 10 countdown of New Age lies. In today's program, we're going to study the seventh biggest lie of the New Age, which has triggered a real epidemic sweeping over the face of the earth. Let's get started. And the countdown continues with the number seven position in the top 10 lies of the new age. Witchcraft and magic revisited. Witchcraft has been around since the Garden of Eden when Satan shifted shape to become a serpent. It flourished in Egypt and was the object of reverent study in the mystery schools of Pharaoh's court. Babylon, in the land of the Chaldeans, was another ancient hub of occult knowledge. In both of these kingdoms, the sorcerers, wizards, astrologers, and magicians were the counselors and advisors to the pharaohs and kings. Today, witchcraft is rampant and has reached epidemic proportions, infiltrating even the church. Harry Potter has given witchcraft a facelift. It's become hip and trendy to be involved in some form of occultism. There's no longer any perception of it being shameful or undesirable. Many are being deceived by this newfound social acceptability of witchcraft and magic. What is witchcraft exactly? It's the practice of magic, especially black magic, the use of spells and curses to influence a person's life or behavior, the invocation of spirits, and the use of magical powers borrowed from demons to achieve a desired outcome. You see, fallen angels have powers that human beings don't have because God created angels of an order superior to men. Therefore, witches co-labor with fallen angels to attain their goals. Make no mistake about it. Witchcraft is an abomination before God, and He has promised to punish witches even unto death. Let's shine the light of God's Word into this matter so that we can unmask every deception of the enemy. First Deception Witchcraft in Every Flavor The first striking thing about witchcraft or sorcery is that it comes in many flavors. Every nation and people has its own. In the U.S. it's called Wicca. In the French African ex-colonies and in Louisiana it's called Voodoo. In the Spanish-speaking Caribbean and Latin America it's called Santeria. In Brazil it's called Candomblé and so forth. My own involvement with witchcraft started in Paris, and it began partly due to a misleading label. In some intellectually sophisticated European circles, it's become fashionable to explore the various forms of shamanism, which are the practices of the native peoples of North and South America and Australia. Had I even once heard the word witchcraft or black magic associated with this uh, practice, I, I believe it would have given me pause. But hundreds of New Age books and even my literature professor in college raved about the powers of shamans. If anything, shaman and, and, and shamanism acquired a sort of mystique for me and I perceived shamanism as being white magic, something good and highly spiritual. In Paris, shamanic tables are very well attended by all kinds of people interested in the, in the paranormal and other supernatural phenomena. At any group seance, you'll count at least 50 people in attendance. And when Filipino healers are in town, well over 200 people will show up over the course of the weekend for a consultation. 
Second deception. Witchcraft and magic aren't real. This deception doesn't involve the witches, sorcerers, or magicians at all. They know very well that they're conjuring up real forces. It's the Christians who believe this stuff isn't real. Wake up, Christian soldiers. You've fallen asleep during your watch. The Lord wants us to be childlike, not childish. If you're too naive, the Lord can't use you. Witches work in concert with Satan and his fallen angels to bring evil into this world. They do lots of damage, but may not be aware of the pain they're causing. Sorcerers and shamans invoke demons in various guises, as gods and goddesses. By the way, most witchcraft traditions involve some form of goddess worship. They may invoke demons as nature spirits, like mountains or trees, by worshiping heavenly bodies, like the sun or the moon. And other times, they invoke demons in the form of animal spirits. These animal spirits are their spirit guides and give them their power. Voodoo witches summon wild dog spirits to eat their victims' flesh. Japanese witches use foxes for their ruses. Shamans use bird spirits, bats, scorpions, and reptiles. In preparation for a shamanic ritual, the shaman and his assistant lay out the table on the floor with a variety of idols from different pagan traditions. You ingest plant extracts in liquid or powder form to induce altered states of consciousness. In other types of witchcraft, symbols such as the pentagram play an important role. Sorcery and black magic are very real. They invoke demonic powers, demonic forces, and spirit forms. It isn't because you can't see it that it isn't effective. So much so that in Australia now, the law forbids bone pointing. Bone pointing is a method of execution used by the Aborigines. During the course of a ritual, the tribe males charge a bone with curses against whoever's been judged. The tribe killers follow the, the victim, however long that may take, until they can point the bone against him and pronounce the curse. The condemned man usually dies within days of being cursed. Clearly, the Australians have seen enough deaths take place to know that bone pointing is for real, to have a law against it, and in many Australian hospitals, emergency room staff are trained to deal with these cases when they come in. Voodoo needles are a very similar concept. Voodoo witches invest a voodoo doll as representing someone they wish to hurt. They start thrusting the needle into strategic parts of the doll, typically organs or nerve endings, and depending on the intensity, frequency, and the exact location of the needles, the effect is to kill, torment, or simply harass their victims. I have my own voodoo persecutors. They've been harassing me for over two years now. They enjoy poking needles into the tip of my fingernails, very painful, or sometimes my lower back. Other manifestations of witchcraft you can actually see. Santeria witches use spiders falling from the sky or the ceiling to harass their victims. One of those end time event videos on YouTube features a shot of black spiders raining from the sky over Brazil. Hundreds, if not thousands of spiders. Quite a sight. In my own life, I've suffered a lot from witchcraft. When I was in Paris, still walking in darkness, I was betrayed by the shaman I had worked with. And yet never did I participate in a shamanic ritual for an evil outcome. After I surrendered my life to Jesus, all of the demonic harassment continued, except that now it wasn't demonic harassment anymore. anymore. It became spiritual warfare because I was on the other side. Our focus today is Bible truth and not my personal testimony. And I've learned to be careful about what I share. In most Christians, the spirit of disbelief is so strong that they can't believe or comprehend 95% of the things I've experienced. It hurts when your friends look at you like you're insane. But the witches, they know. Third deception. Witchcraft is a sign of spiritual development. This is the New Age aspect of witchcraft, which presents these evil powers as highly desirable and is the consequence of a high level of spiritual evolution. 
The ability to manipulate supernatural energies is perceived as good, nothing questionable or reprehensible. The Bible says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. It's in Isaiah 5.20. Let's take, for example, Christopher Penzak, a best-selling author of witchcraft books. I'm quoting now from the Llewellyn website. Christopher Penzak has studied extensively with witches, mystics, shamans, and healers in a variety of traditions from around the world to synthesize his own practice of magic and healing. Christopher was empowered by his spiritual experiences to live a magical life. End of quote. So living a magical life is the crowning achievement of any witch. And of course, the unspoken assumption is that witches are fortunate people who live enchanted lives and whom you want to associate yourself with. Let me read a quick description of one of Mr. Penzak's top-selling books called The Inner Temple of Witchcraft, Magic, Meditation, and Psychic Development. Explore your inner temple, your personal sacred space where there are no boundaries and all things are possible. With study, dedication, and practice, the lessons and exercises in this book will empower you to transform the repetitive rigors of the daily grind into a witch's web of magical experiences. This sounds great, enticing, doesn't it? There are no boundaries and all things are possible. You want to sign up immediately so that you can escape the daily grind and fashion your life into a web of magical experiences? This is how so many are deceived. Let's look at what's really true about these statements. Number one, what they're selling is lawlessness, where there are no boundaries and you can get whatever you want. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 4, everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. Second, they're churning out large numbers of self-trained witches who are now empowered to go out and start practicing their newly acquired skills, such as astral projections, and who may not realize which master they're serving. And thirdly, witchcraft is indeed a web. And woe to those who get trapped in that web. Satan is the spider who spun that web, and their ultimate fate is utter destruction through betrayal in this life or eternal death on the day of judgment. And as for sorcery and magic being signs of spiritual evolution, scripture actually says the exact opposite, that sorcery is the work of the flesh. Let's read in Galatians 5, 19 through 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Fourth Deception Witches manipulate demons. Witches don't manipulate demons. Demons manipulate witches. Witches like to think that they control the demons and spirits they invoke. Nothing could be farther from the truth. In fact, it's the witches that are controlled by the very demons and spirits they invoke and who always require a high price for their services. Whenever demons are involved, human sacrifice is always a requirement. Although sometimes the witch or the person being used by the demons may not be aware of it. On the surface, it may appear to be an accident. Let me give you two very different examples of demonic sacrifice. You're listening to Setting the Record Straight, God's Truth for This Generation. James Ray is a self-help guru who featured prominently in the DVD, The Secret, that we already discussed in our program on the Law of Attraction. On October 8, 2009, James Ray was leading a New Age spiritual warrior retreat near Sedona, Arizona, in a sweat lodge. The sweat lodge is a purification ceremony that takes place in a hut used by Native American Indians for ceremonial steam baths, prayer, 
and offerings to their gods. In the Sweat Lodge New Age retreat led by James Ray, things went terribly wrong. People started collapsing and vomiting and gasping for air, but they were encouraged to stay inside regardless. Two participants died on the spot. Eighteen others were hospitalized after suffering burns, dehydration, breathing problems, kidney failure, or elevated body temperature. And James Ray served two years in jail for negligent homicide. I don't think he understood then, or even understands today, what really happened. Here's another example, a story from this weekend's Daily Mail newspaper. Britain's voodoo killers. This week, a minister warned of a wave of child abuse and killings linked to witchcraft. Alarmist? This investigation suggests otherwise. People are investigating a tide of violent acts, often against children, by those who believe in witchcraft practices known as voodoo, kindoki, and juju. Launching the National Action Plan to tackle child abuse linked to faith or belief, Children's Minister Tim Lawton said that there had been a wall of silence around such abuse, adding, it's clear we need to make a stand. Over the past decade, Scotland Yard has recorded 83 cases of children being tortured and abused in barbaric rituals linked to witchcraft. Demonic sacrifice was common in the heathen lands around Israel. This is why in Deuteronomy 18, God firmly prohibited the children of Israel to engage in these practices. You'll hear in this passage how child sacrifice comes before all of the other abominations, because that's the prelude or prerequisite to having evil power and to being promoted in the kingdom of darkness. When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft, or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures spells, or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you will dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. I personally know of a very sad case where a Haitian grandmother, who is a voodoo witch, had two of her grandchildren entrusted to her care every day while her daughter went to work. Well, the evil grandmother sacrificed the temples of her two grandchildren to demons, and today these young kids, aged around 11 and 9, have been diagnosed as autistic. In reality, both of them are demon-possessed by dumb spirits. So sacrifice doesn't always entail death. It can be the yielding up of someone's temple to be possessed by demons. These demons are stubborn and resistant and do not willingly leave a temple where they've taken residence. But I believe that our God is faithful and will deliver these children in his own timing. And I look forward to having a powerful testimony to share with all of you. Please understand that I'm not suggesting that all children diagnosed with autism are demon-possessed, but these two children are. What is Bible truth about witchcraft? Number one. These are the words that the prophet Samuel spoke to King Saul after he failed to obey the Lord's clear instruction and preferred to please the people. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. 1 Samuel 15, 23. Witchcraft is the spirit of rebellion. Why? Because witchcraft is a controlling spirit. It wants to force outcomes, the exact opposite of surrendering to God's will. 
Number two, witchcraft, sorcery, and magic are about using supernatural resources, even if it means hurting someone to get what they want. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, referring to the devil, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. Remember, Satan can't create anything. So in order to give his followers anything, he has to steal it from someone else. Number three, the practice of witchcraft entails breaking God's Ten Commandments. Having other gods before God, worshiping idols and demons, coveting, stealing, witnessing evil by sending curses against people, and killing or allowing killings to take place. Number four, Babylon is fallen. Chapter two of the book of Daniel. When King Nebuchadnezzar has the dream that he can't remember and wants his sorcerers, astrologers, and magicians to tell him both the dream and the interpretation of the dream, not one of them had enough power to do so. Daniel, on the other hand, was, wasn't intimidated. He knew the God of heaven knows all that is in the heart of man. So Daniel went to his God, and God revealed to Daniel both the dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had, as well as the interpretation of that dream. God gave us this story so that we would know that those powers are not nearly as powerful as the God of Israel. If you put your faith in those powers, one day you'll be disappointed because as the second angel of the book of Revelation says, Babylon is fallen. Number five, there's another fascinating Bible story where we see that the powers of the wizards and sorcerers doesn't measure up to God's power. This is the story of how Moses and his brother Aaron are negotiating with Pharaoh so that he would let the children of Israel leave. God decides to send 10 plagues upon Egypt to get Pharaoh to budge. The story starts in Exodus 7. God commands Moses and Aaron to present themselves before Pharaoh. When they were in his presence, Aaron was to throw down his rod to the floor and the rod became a serpent. Let's pick up the story in Exodus 7. But Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. So the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For every man threw down his rod, and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Notice how the Lord uses the rod, which symbolizes the magician's wand, to rebuke the magicians and demonstrate his superior power over theirs. But the plot thickens. There's an interesting progression of the plagues. And the Lord continues to instruct Moses and Aaron to use the rod to activate a number of the plagues. First, Aaron stretches out his hand over all of the waters of Egypt and they become blood. Pharaoh's magicians are able to replicate that. Then God instructed Aaron to hold his rod over the waters and streams and rivers and to call up frogs over the land. So frogs covered every square inch of the land of Egypt, including Pharaoh's palace. They crept all over his bed and his body. The magicians were able to duplicate that plague as well. But now, for the third plague, Aaron stretched out his rod over the dust of Egypt, and it became lice that covered every man and beast. But this miracle the wizards and sorcerers were not able to replicate, and they said, this is the finger of God. From that point onward, they didn't try again to replicate the acts of God. But I want you to notice something. It wasn't that they didn't have the power to replicate the lice. They'd already replicated the frog, so why couldn't they replicate the lice? It was simply because God had set the limit. This is an interesting footnote on this story. The devil can only operate within the boundaries established by God. God defines the limit. Even though Satan might have enough power to do something, if the Lord doesn't allow it, Satan can't do it. Number six. The Bible uses the strongest condemnation against witchcraft, magic, 
and sorcery. We read in the Old Testament, Exodus 22, Suffer not a witch to live. Whosoever lieth with a beast shall surely be put to death. He that sacrificeth unto any god, save unto the Lord only, he shall be utterly destroyed. Although the word abomination is not used in this passage, we see that witchcraft is listed at the same level as lying with the beast and sacrificing unto other gods. Number seven. What about the New Testament? Is witchcraft condoned after the Messiah came? Absolutely not. We find the strongest condemnation in the book of Revelation. But the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or their thefts. That's Revelation 9, verses 20 and 21. In the book of Revelation, it's made very clear that witches and sorcerers shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. Let's read in Revelation 22, verses 15 and 16. Blessed are those who wash their robes so that they may have the right to the tree of life and that they may enter the city by the gates. Outside are the dogs and sorcerers and the sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. And now let's read in Revelation 21 verses 6 through 8. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. A call to repentance. Witchcraft is evil. Even if you're a good witch, simply trying to help yourself and others, healing through magic, using spells and enchantments to bring good things into your life and the lives of others, you're engaging in abominations before the Lord God of heaven. Witchcraft is Babylon. Babylon is fallen, is fallen. Babylon is bankrupt, has always been, even in the time of Daniel. Its power pales in comparison to the power of God. Why would you die? Why would you choose to burn in the lake of fire? Why would you choose to stay outside the gates of the holy city where there is life everlasting? God is loving and all-powerful. No matter what life brings, His grace is sufficient. When we surrender to his perfect will for our lives, we have happiness and peace that passes all understanding. And he can work great and mighty things through us for his glory. God wants you to be saved. Jesus loves you in spite of anything and everything you have done. If we confess our sins, he is just and faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. The Lord Jesus Christ is calling you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show signs and wonders to deceive, if it were possible, even the very elect. And Satan will disguise himself as an angel of light. But don't you be fooled. The truth is to be found in the Bible, God's Word, the only source and standard of absolute truth. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Thank you for listening to The Top 10 Lies of the New Age According to Marla Alona, producer of Setting the Record Straight, God's Truth for This Generation. If you have been blessed by this program, we encourage you to share it with others. For any questions about this Bible study or any other spiritual matter, email us at info at citybiblegroup.com. To learn more, visit our website www.citybiblegroup.com 
Hi, I'm Marla Ilana. Thank you so much for studying God's Word with me. Please click on the subscribe button below and you'll be blessed with many more powerful truths for our generation. Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready?